Hello friends, this is Homer Knox of MenTeachingMen.com. In this video, we're going to do a word study of the word abomination. The New American Standard and King James Version Bibles will mainly be used for a scripture translation in this video. Abomination. This is certainly a horrible word used in the Bible. Abomination is used 69 times in the King James Version Bible. Meaning of abomination. Something regarded with disgust, filthy, detestable, or hatred. Three distinct Hebrew words are rendered in the English Bible for abomination or abominable thing. They are used symbolically of sin in general. Abomination. The word is used to describe peoples or individuals that are opposed to the ritual or moral requirements of God. God never uses the word abomination in his reference to mankind, only to people that disobey his commandments or reject his love. On the contrary, God has great love for all people and wants everyone to repent. He certainly didn't create us to abhor us. Thank goodness for our loving God and Father. John 3.16 For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Eternal Life In the New Testament, the term abomination is used by Jesus describing end times happenings as a sign of the approaching destruction of Jerusalem. Situations in the Bible where the word abomination is used. Abomination used in the Bible. Number one, Jews in Egypt. Egypt was at one time ruled by shepherds who were brutal and cruel. When the Hebrews came into their land as shepherds, they were an abomination to the Egyptians. Genesis 43:32 Because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Genesis 46.34 For every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. Abomination used in the Bible. Number two, dietary laws. In the book of Leviticus, there are approximately ten statements using the word abomination in connection to God's dietary laws. God is concerned about our health. Third John 1 2 Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health, just as your soul prospers.
Many of God's dietary laws as listed in the book of Leviticus are still practiced today. Leviticus 11, 13 and 19, paraphrased. These, moreover, you shall detest among the birds. They are abhorrent not to be eaten. The eagle, vulture, buzzard, kite, falcon, raven, ostrich, owl, seagull, hawk, pelican, vulture, stork, heron, and the bat. Abomination used in a Bible. Number three, prohibition of homosexual relationships and unisex. Leviticus 18.22 Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. Abomination used in the Bible. Number four, warning against idol worship. Worshiping of other gods or lack of holiness in or respect for God's temple. Deuteronomy 7.25 the graven images of their gods you are to burn with fire. You shall not covet the silver or the gold that is on them, or take it for yourselves, or you will become snared by it, for it is an abomination to the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 7.26 Do not bring any detestable abomination objects into your home, for then you will be destroyed just like them. You must utterly detest such things, for they are set apart for destruction. Jeremiah 2.7 I brought you into the fruitful land to eat its fruit and its good things, but you came and defiled my land, and my inheritance you made an abomination. Abomination used in the Bible. Number 5 warning against learning the habits of heathen people. Deuteronomy 18.9 When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abomination practices of those nations. Abomination used in the Bible. Number 6 failures of King Solomon. First Kings 11.5 For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zinonites, and Milcom, the abomination of the Amorites. First Kings 11.7 Then Solomon built a high place for Shemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill country that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Abomination used in the Bible. Number seven, the actions of man. Proverbs 3.32, for the devious are an abomination to the Lord, but he is intimate with the upright. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. There are six things which the Lord hates. Yes, seven which are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devised wicked plans. feet that run rapidly to evil, 
a false witness who utters lies, and one who spreads strife among brothers. Proverbs 11.20 The perverse in heart are an abomination to the Lord, but the blameless in their walk are his delight. Proverbs 12.22 Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal faithfully are his delight. Abomination used in the Bible. Number eight, used in prophecy. Daniel 11.31 Forces from him will arise, desecrate the sanctuary fortress, and do away with the regular sacrifice, and they will set up the abomination of desolation. Abomination used in the Bible. Number nine, spoken by Christ and the Apostle John in Revelation of the End Times. Mark 13, 14, But when you see the abomination of desolation standing where it should not be, let the reader understand, then those who in Judea must flee to the mountains. Revelation 2127 And nothing unclean, and no one who practices abomination and lying, shall ever come into it, the city of God, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Conclusion Studies on the Word Abomination Certainly not a pleasant study of a word written in the Bible. Aren't we thankful that Jesus Christ provided the method of forgiveness through his loving sacrifice of himself on the cross at Mount Calvary? First Corinthians six eleven, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Thanks so much for watching. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to the Men Teaching Men YouTube channel. This video is dedicated to the honor of Richard and Roberta Dunn, Christian Retreat, Bradenton, Florida. Hello friends, this is Homer Knox again. I hope you enjoyed this video teaching. The question I have for you is, are you born again? Do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? If not, why not? Why not? Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He suffered and died under Pontius Pilate and the Romans. He was buried and he rose from the dead on the third day. He's now ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. There is salvation in no one else, no one else. And so if this has stirred your heart and you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, please pray with me. Dear Jesus, please come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins, all my sins by your precious blood. I accept you as my personal Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for my home in heaven. Thank you for giving me the Holy Spirit and making me a new creature. Amen and amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer from your heart, you're now born again, you're a Christian. Welcome. Welcome to the family. If you prayed this prayer after slipping away, you're now part of the family, you're back in the fold. Welcome, congratulations. There's another teaching on the menteachingmen.com website entitled, I Just Got Saved, and that video will help you with your new walk in Jesus Christ. God bless you, God bless you, amen.